This is a presentation of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. The term lake can be misleading. It conjures up images of simplicity and calm. It implies a definite, often small, manageable size. But while these five bodies of water, Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario are lakes, they are nothing if not vast, times volatile, and certainly ever-changing and complex. The Great Lakes make up a region of contrast, sandy beaches contrasted with icy harsh winters and rough waters, pristine wilderness juxtaposed with its tremendous value as a resource, rich with economic history and urban development. Since 1974, the Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory has served as the primary location for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's ecosystem research in the Great Lakes region. Looking at a diverse range of issues, GLURL researchers want to understand the complexities, the nuances in these large ecosystems, in order to forecast what will happen in the future. Marie Colton has been the lab's director since 2009. Her background is in physical oceanography, and she has worked for organizations such as NASA. All right, we have an environment that's somewhat predictable. We can kind of figure out the weather reasonably enough. Um, but we have living resources that live in that environment, but just like us, they behave. They move and shift and go in different places. How do you put those two together? And then how do you forecast that? And then the human dimension we add on to that, now, what are we going to do as stewards of this planet? If we have this knowledge in hand between the environment and its resources, how are we going to behave to be good stewards of it? Glural scientists operate primarily out of two locations, the Lake Michigan Field Station in Muskegon, Michigan, and the lab's main location in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Ann Arbor location houses a variety of different lab spaces, from chemistry labs to preserved biology labs to a freshwater biology lab that allow for a wide range of projects. I work as an electronics engineer and we work with our whole group, the Marine Instrumentation Lab works on the instrumentation that is necessary for, for doing science in the lakes, for studying things. You can, you can look at the lakes, you can look at the water and say, okay, but we need to know something about it. We need some facts, we need some data. The Marine Instrumentation Lab develops technology and outfits devices to measure data such as air and water temperature, current, and the distribution and abundance of zooplankton, in addition to gathering real-time video. Sometimes in engineering, you, all you're doing is paperwork. Uh, sometimes you're working on projects. There's, there's a wide range of what you can do. But in this, we're, we're doing everything from the design, working with paper, uh, building it, uh, debugging it, testing it, calibrating it, going out in the field and, and running the equipment. Uh, so it's, it's interesting because there's, you get involved in, in everything. In addition to engineers, Glural employs many kinds of researchers, from hydrologists and oceanographers to biologists and chemists. It also offers seasonal positions and partners with other institutions to provide opportunities for students. With a staff of over 30 researchers and numerous partnerships with other agencies and regional universities, the lab is not only able to conduct research in a number of different fields, but also participate in many broad interdisciplinary endeavors, like the multiple stressor project in Saginaw Bay. Located in Lake Huron, Saginaw Bay is an area that has long been impacted by human activity, such as overfishing, which resulted in the depletion of species like walleye, pollution, which resulted in increased phosphorus levels in algal production in the bay, and invasive species impact. Researcher Craig Stowe works to develop predictive models of aquatic systems and is the principal investigator for the Saginaw Bay project. And the science is, uh, well, it's a big detective story essentially. There are factors at play that we're trying to sort out and they're all happening at once and, and how they cause the changes we're seeing is difficult to know based on the limited number of things that you can effectively measure at different times. 
Multiple GLURL researchers have been working in conjunction with more than 10 other organizations since 2007 to monitor the effects of these factors, among others, on Saginaw Bay and the area's ecosystem services. Biologist Tom Nalepa is one of those researchers. His field of study has had a tremendous impact, not only on the bay, but on all of the Great Lakes. The last 20 years has more or less been studying the impacts of zebra mussels and quagga mussels on the ecology of the Great Lakes. What we've been doing is, is looking at what impacts they've had on communities, on the food web, how they, how they basically changed um, the way organisms relate to each other throughout the Great Lakes. Here in southern Lake Michigan, only 20 years after they were first found in the Great Lakes, these mussels coat the lake bottom. Sampling indicates that invasive mussels appear in densities of more than 20,000 per square meter in some parts of the lakes. These mussels filter some algae and sediment out of the water, allowing for more sunlight to reach the bottom of shallow bays like Saginaw. As a result, nuisance and sometimes toxic species of algae that mussels won't always filter are able to grow resulting in unpleasant problems such as decaying algae, washing up on beaches in the form of muck, changes in the lake's food webs, and water quality issues, namely harmful algal blooms. And with invasive species, that has changed the equation. And so we have to basically um, start new with these models now because the parameters have changed. As a result of pressing issues such as invasive species, GLURL researchers are studying these systems so as to develop ways for people to adapt to and prevent problems like these in the future, both in the short term by developing tools such as water current models that can forecast where algae containing harmful bacteria will be, and in the long term by working on ways to prevent more invasive species from entering the lakes. But I do see this big push to try to get into a predictive capability around ecosystems. It's time to stop being reactive, you know, when there's a huge issue, a calamity, we run out and we clean things up and we try to restore the environment. But it's time for us to get ahead of that and do more proactive management of our resources, keep them healthy in the first place. So that's where I think our role is, and I, I, it's not a small undertaking. So it's 10, 15, 100 years, you know. I'd like to see the, see the lab maintain a presence for all that time.